Hi there, everyone. It's John Pushkar. I'm here today to bring you more important information to try to keep you safe in the world of fuels and combustion equipment. Today, I'm fresh off of a week at a paper mill in Wisconsin where I was teaching their staff about steam safety. While this is all fresh in my mind, I wanted to give you the five tips that I thought were most important that most of the students and I discussed all week, and I wanna give them here to you today, so hopefully they can make a difference in your life and your operations. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. The first thing I want to talk to you about is how to properly warm up steam lines. And warming up steam lines is all about opening and closing valves. Steam piping systems, when they're cold, can be deadly. All of the steam that first passes you opening that valve turns into water instantly. And some steam systems require a supervised startup. So it means that there has to be individuals strategically placed at drains that have been installed in the piping system so that water can be observed being removed and then these drains close when they start to show live steam. That would mean obviously that we've heated up all the steel in the piping system and now that free steam is able to escape down a drain. This warm-up process could take hours. It depends on lots of things like the pipe diameter, the number of feet of pipe, where traps are installed, and other equipment that might be in the system. Sometimes steam systems are designed with small diameter warm-up valves and bypasses around very large diameter valves. You've got to have some instruction and a plan for how the steam system's going to be put into service. It's never just about throwing open a steam valve. In fact, even when it comes to closing valves, you should do this very slowly and gently. And by the way, this is not just about steam piping systems, but also about condensate systems. The entire time these startups are in process, there has to be people who are listening for and observing piping systems to look for evidence of water hammer. This would be places where water is being picked up and accelerated, and this is a very dangerous condition that one has to be mindful of. Issue number two, never try to force valves open or force valves closed. In the case of steam piping, there's kind of a joke in the trades about how long larger diameter steam valves actually are functional. And a lot of guys say, well, like about 15 minutes. And frankly, steam piping systems, steam valves, it's a very severe service. There's a lot of crud in piping systems, especially in steam systems. This stuff gets washed into steam seats. These are typically gate valves, rising stem or not rising stem, but we're relying on this metal object to find a home within something that was designed with tolerances of thousands of an inch after there have been years of small pieces of rust, mill scale, weld slag, being washed into that little crevice where the thing seats. It typically does not happen or happen well. Sometimes this makes valves seize in position. Sometimes the stems are no longer operable. They're bent, they're corroded, packings have seized. Sometimes when you're trying to close, you're closing against debris. There's this thought that if I use a big pipe wrench to open it or close it, or if I bang on it with a hammer, that might help. That's never the solution. You especially have to be careful when things are pressurized. There's a phenomenon in the metallurgy world called creep. 
and it happens below yield strength at high temperatures. There have been instances where valves have literally come apart when people have tried to force them. Sometimes fasteners are corroded and can break. Obviously, you understand how bad that could be. Saying that something like that could kill you is not a stretch. Tip number three is all about seemingly little leaks in steam systems. There are so many different crazy dangerous ways that piping systems can fail that you can never trust that a little leak is something that's innocent. A little spot on a gasketed flange that's now blown out and now leaking steam could quickly turn into that entire gasket being blown out and you being exposed to a tremendous amount of steam very quickly. I hope you understand that one breath of steam that's over 120 degrees will cook your esophagus and the inside of your lungs. There will be very little that anybody could do for you for treatment. Report steam leaks immediately. Have someone do some non-destructive testing at the very least, maybe some ultrasonic thickness testing to see if you've eroded away or corroded away a significant elbow or joint. Whether or not your facility is an OSHA PSM, Process Safety Management Facility, where you're required by law to have a mechanical integrity program, you should be doing something regarding non-destructive testing of your piping systems. It's not very complex. There are instruments that you could buy and put into service for hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars. Tip number four, never ever be wrenching on pressurized steam piping systems. If you've got a leak at a gasket, you've probably blown out part of it. You've probably also now wire drawn or eroded part of the raised face of the flange. Tightening that is not gonna help. And tightening fasteners that are already improperly selected or have loads on them that no one expected or are corroded means that as you tighten them, you could put forces on them that instantly cause them to come apart. I understand that depressurizing a system is not popular. It means that things might go out of production. It means that space heating systems might need to come down. And again, it means this complex restarting, reheating of pipe like I talked about. But folks, it's not worth an accident and not worth your life. This is never something you should be doing. And last but not least, be aware of water hammer. It's one of the most common, most dangerous problems you're gonna encounter in operating a steam distribution system. And there are so many ways you can get there. This is something we discussed last week. It could be level control problems on a boiler. It could be steam traps failed open, where I've now pressurized the condensate system and the traps aren't working as effectively as they could. Or it could be traps failed closed and I'm accumulating water in the piping, getting it picked up and accelerated. I could even have a problem with a hanger, where now I've got pipe that's sagged and I've got an area of the pipe where I'm puddling and pooling water. In fact, just walking around and looking at hanger conditions and looking to see if piping has been moved or shifted is an easy way to understand if this is a chronic problem at your facility. If you don't know what I'm talking about, water hammer actually seems like a hammering of the piping system, a steady thumping or rhythmic pounding. It could be pipes moving and swaying in the air, both the steam system or the condensate return system could be experiencing water hammer. And just as important as recognizing it is knowing what to do about it. Most of the time, if there's a way to reduce steam flow, that's a help. But you should have a plan and you should be talking this through. And if it's a frequent condition and goes, yeah, that happens all the time, then you've got problems. It should not be happening all the time. Folks, at the end of the day, this is about saving you from burn injuries. 
Think through your PPE strategy when it comes to folks even opening and closing valves. I'm thinking long sleeve shirts at a minimum. I'm thinking long sleeve leather gloves. I'm thinking face shields. And if you use a lot of hot water and you wanna protect people regarding hot water, unfortunately, there aren't a lot of great common PPE practices, but some people use boots. Some people have aprons that are made of a water repellent material so that if you get sprayed with hot water, at least it doesn't soak into your clothes. And about the only other thing I know that folks do is they try to insulate from the possible heat damage that could occur to skin from steam that's being released. One of the other very important things that you need to be thinking about is what your response might be to a large steam leak. People need to understand that if you're trapped in an area where there's a large steam leak, it's very hard to don some type of protective equipment to go rescue someone. Your responders and even your maintenance people need to be talking ahead of time about what they would do, where they would shut steam off, how they would handle a large steam release at your facility. I hope there's some nugget here that has helped you because folks remember, at the end of the day, the life that you save, it just might be yours. Hi, it's John Pushkar. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to know about more ways that I can help, you can check out my website at www.prescientts.com. There you'll find information about the Prescient Technical Services Online School, my book, Fuels and Combustion System Safety, What You Don't Know Can Kill You, and also about some of the consulting projects that I've been providing to clients for the past 40 years. Things like implementing inspection and testing programs on a corporate enterprise-wide level, things like reviewing and commenting on capital equipment purchases that involve combustion equipment, and even being a legal expert if things go really wrong. Once again, thank you for attending, and remember, be safe out there. The life you save, it just might be yours.